Hi everyone, it's Taryn from Maple University. Stella's away today, but thank you for joining me. Today I'll be teaching you how to play Turing Machine, and after this video you'll be ready to play the game. Stay tuned. Let's learn to play Turing Machine, game designed by Fabien Gridel and Johan Levé and published by Le Scorpion Mask. If this video has been helpful to you, then please help us make more of these videos by liking and commenting below. For now, let's get to the table. Turing Machine is a logic deduction game in which players will leverage the power of punch cards to try to find a three-digit combination. Players will be using the punch cards to ask questions of the game, to try to learn things about their codes. And the fastest player to guess the true combination will win the game. To set up, put all of the punch cards into the holder, the number 5 through to the number 1. All copies of the same card, for example all of the blue ones, are identical. Choose a scenario, either from the rule book or from the website, which you can get to turingmachine.info or by scanning this QR code. Here we'll set up problem 1. The green boxes will show you which of the small criteria cards you need, ranging between a total of 4 and 6. Hunt through the numbered deck and find those cards. The white boxes show you which of the larger verifier cards you need. These come in four different colours, and each card has a different number in each of those four colours. Once again, hunt through that deck and then find the appropriate cards. You can return all remaining cards to the box. Now pair these cards up around the hexagon where everyone can see, according to what's shown. Here for example, on A you would place Criteria card 4, face up, and Verifier card 447, face down. The backs of the verifiers are dry erase, and so mark off which letter each of these is associated with. This is because they're going to be picked up and moved throughout the game, and you need an easy way to get them back in the right place. Give each player a note page, a pen, and a player aid which doubles as a screen. You're now ready to play. In a game of Turing Machine, players are racing against each other to be the first to find the specific three-digit code associated with these cards that were placed in setup. Each digit will be a number between 1 and 5. Turing Machine is played in rounds, and there are no turns within those rounds. Each player will resolve all steps of a round simultaneously. The first step is to make a guess for your code. This can be any three-digit combination, and while it will likely be random in the first round, as you go through you'll be picking codes which will help you to deduce the final code. Now take the three punch cards which correspond to your code, and line them up so that the large icons in the corner, this square, triangle and circle, line up. All of the remaining holes should line up so that there's only one small square visible through the cards. Now you'll try to extract information from the game about the actual code by comparing it with your chosen code. You can do this between one and three times per round. Let's say here for example we ask question A. When you choose a question, look at each of the criteria showing at the bottom of that card and determine which of them is true for your guessed code. Here we're comparing the yellow number to 4. In this code, yellow is less than 4, and so we're asking the game, in the final answer, is yellow less than 4? Now flip over the verifier card and place the punch cards from your code over the top, lining up the symbols in the corners. This is true even if you're using one of the other colours of number from setup. You'll still line it up with green at the top. If you can see an X through the card when you're done, it means that no, this is not true. So in this case it would mean that yellow is not less than 4 in the final answer. If you were to find a tick, then it would mean yes. Then take your punch cards away and flip the card back over for the next player to use. Now record your raw answer in this grid. In this case it was question A and we got an X. 
It's important to do this because this counts the number of questions you've asked in each round and across the game. You can then record your findings in more detail down here. In this case, we now know from clue A that yellow is not less than four. You can also cross off impossible options in this grid. Let's do another example to make sure we've got the hang of it. Here for criterion D, we work out which of these three is true. In this case, blue is less than both yellow and purple. So it's this one here. We run through the punch card like so, and once again, we find that we've got an X. From that, we can conclude that in the final answer, blue is not less than both purple and yellow. Once again, mark the raw answer for accounting and flesh out your findings in the notes below if you wish. Across the round, you may make between one and three total questions. Once all players have finished, then the round is over. Remember that there are no turns. If someone else is using a verifier, or if all of the punch card that you need are being used by other players, just simply wait until they're available again. All that's important is that no players move on to their next round until all players have finished this round. Before moving to the next round, all players now have the chance to solve the puzzle and win the game, and players indicate whether they want to do this simultaneously with a thumbs up or thumbs down. Players who want to guess write down their answer on their sheet, and then check their solutions in the rulebook or online. You could also check by verifying against all of the game's verifiers, since only one code will show a tick on all of them. Any player who makes a mistake is out of the game, and among all players who were correct this round, whoever asked the fewest total questions across the course of the game wins the game. If tied, victory is shared. There is plenty more to learn or try as you play Turing Machine. You can play solo or cooperative, and you'll play under the same rules, but your aim will simply be to solve the puzzle with the fewest total questions. As you advance through the levels of difficulty, you'll come across criteria cards which give you much less information. For example, this card we saw before, and when I guess a code, only one of these three boxes below can be true, so I'll know exactly what this card is telling me. In this case, it will tell me whether blue is less than yellow or not. However, this card has six different options, and three of them are true for this. Blue is equal to one, and yellow and purple are both greater than one. So if I get a yes when I check this against the verifier, it would mean that one or more of those three things is true, but I don't know which one or ones. This makes the deduction more challenging. Finally, be aware that these criteria and verifiers will ultimately lead you to a single unique code. This can sometimes help you to work out which questions to ask and which ones not to. For example, here, this is the only criteria which talks about purple. And it can look at whether purple is smaller than the other numbers. This allows you to eliminate some of the scenarios where purple is equal to the other numbers, but it will be very scenario dependent. And that's how to play Turing Machine. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it useful, please help us by hitting the like button and subscribe to us. You can also hit the meeple in the corner to do that and hit the bell icon so you'll know when we have new videos. You can also follow us on Instagram for Stella's Board Game Journey. Questions, comments and feedback are all welcome in the comments section below. Thank you for watching and see you next time.